on a bicycle? No! How? 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 Your idea is a fucking disaster! No! No! You're not gonna do this! Hello and welcome to Bicycle Touring Talk 63. I am George Schlackhegg. The, the one, one and, and only. only. In this series, I talk about my bicycle tours. Most recently, I've been covering my coast-to-coast -coast tour across Canada. Sometimes I talk about it like it's something everyone should do. I refer to it as the best way to get to know Canada and live an awesome adventure. While this may be true, things aren't quite so simple. Cycling across Canada is a huge commitment and it isn't always fun. As a matter of fact, there will probably be more really tough moments than fun ones along the way. If you're not prepared for them, then you might find yourself ready to give up somewhere along the way, far away from home and discouraged. <laughs> Worse, you may even end up hurt or dead. Hey, I'm the last person who wants to talk you out of your Cross Canada bicycle tour. But there are a few really good reasons why you shouldn't do it. In this video, I'll give you six. Consider it a kind of reality check. What's your threshold? Which one would be a deal breaker for you? And how could you overcome it? Or perhaps you'll thank me at the end of the video for saving you a whole lot of trouble you can do without. Let's jump right in. Reasons not to cycle across Canada. Reason number one not to cycle across Canada is that it'll take you three months or more. Can you seriously commit three months of your life to a bicycle tour 100%? How strong a cyclist are you? To be honest, you might want to allocate four months to this undertaking. On the map, following major highways, the tour will come out to about 8,000 kilometers, coast to coast. Mine actually ended up being almost 9,500 kilometers, over 100 days. This means you need to spend three months on your bike, riding much of each day with little time for enjoyment or seeing places. You may lose your job or much of your business, making your future anything but certain. Three or four months is a long time to be away from home. If you have a family, this problem alone may be the deal breaker for you. Problem number two. You may know several Canadian cities because that's where most Canadians live and where most of Canadian life happens. However, Canadian cities are ridiculously far apart. Vast areas between cities and towns are lacking in amenities you may be used to and take for granted. Signs on the highway announcing that there are no services for hundreds of kilometers are not uncommon. No services often means absolutely nothing. You will not have access to food, drinking water, cell phone service, and you name it. Often, there isn't even a picnic table. You'll be by yourself or with your partner or group, left to your own devices. It'll be crucial to carry enough water and food, spare parts for your bike, and the tools you may need to do simple repairs, especially on tires. If you think Canada has a Tim Hortons within reach at any time, you've probably traveled by car. A simple rule of thumb for me has always been that one hour drive in a car equals a day's journey on a bike. Example, Edmonton to Saskatoon takes about five and a half hours of non-stop driving by car. On a bike, it'll take the better part of a week. There'll be places along the way to get supplies, but there'll be very few if using less traveled secondary roads. Some planning is essential. If you're not up for that, it could land you in hot water really quickly. Reason number three. Canada's infrastructure is lacking when it comes to cycling. 
It's true, more and more cities are adding bike lanes and multi-use trails. But those are not well set up when you're trying to cross an entire city. More likely, they'll get you lost and eventually leave you somewhere on a six-lane road where cars and trucks dominate. As someone unfamiliar with the area, you'll be at great risk of getting run over especially during rush hour, which can be a considerable part of the day in some major centers. Oh, it gets worse, because you won't be spending a whole lot of time riding across cities. Most of your time is spent somewhere in the country on highways that were designed for cars. This is not surprising considering the distances. Canada has about as many cars as inhabitants, roughly 35 million. This is a rough figure, so feel free to look this up. Some expressways have wide shoulders that can make riding feel safe, but usually those are heavily traveled. The noise alone could drive you nuts. Secondary roads are a lot quieter, but often they don't have any shoulder at all. Many are in poor repair and enforcement for speed limits is often non-existent, putting you at great risk of, well, getting run over. Anyone who tells you that Canada is a cycling friendly country is either lying or mistaken. Take my word for it. Reason number four, it'll cost you a fortune. Of course, there are already some entry barriers to a big bicycle tour. First, you will need a good bike. Next, you will need camping gear, versatile, high quality clothing, some panniers and racks to carry all that. Not to forget a navigation device and whatever else you use to communicate with loved ones while you're away. Planning on recording the adventures? Better buy a good camera. You'll see the shortcomings of your budget camera after the tour, when it's too late. You also need enough money to feed yourself for four months. Cycling will make you hungry. Planning on doing a lot of camping? That'll cost you too. Even if you're a seasoned stealth camper, there will always be nights when you absolutely need a shower after a long and dusty ride on the highway. On occasion, a commercial campground will seem like a godsend, but it'll cost something. 50 or 60 bucks is not unusual. It'll be even worse when you need to dry off from the rain, because hotels are often $150 or more. If you're absolutely roughing it, you can get by on $30 or $40 a day on average. But that can easily double if you're getting too comfortable with commercial campgrounds and hotels. Can you afford to do that for three months? And oh, uh, did you consider that you won't have an income for that three or four months? Even someone on a regular minimum wage job would come close to losing $10,000 in income. Do you have a budget for that and are you committed to spending it on a bicycle tour that may suck in the end? <laughs> the next issue, number five, is climate. Canada hardly ever has three or four months of nice weather all the way across. You may get a week of pleasant temperatures and sunshine with a tailwind, but it won't last. Generally speaking, Canadian climate is brutal. You can have four seasons in one day, and I'm not even exaggerating. Canada is a country of extremes. This is made even harder when there is no place around to seek shelter when the weather gets nasty. You can expect severe storms in the summer, temperature changes of up to 40 degrees overnight, and snow, the white stuff, pretty much at any time. Hey. Sure, it's not common in the summer, but ask any old Canadian and they'll have a story of a freak snowstorm in the middle of August or even July. I have experienced temperatures near freezing at nighttime in the prairies after days of rain. Strong wind can be your best buddy and double your daily kilometers, 
or it can turn you into a miserable creature struggling along the side of the road like a turtle. Riding against the wind ain't fun. It's worse when it rains straight into your face. Get the picture? You've got to ride hard when it's nice so you can take it easy when it's not. Sometimes you'll have to ride hard when you'd rather not ride at all. Am I making this sound ugly now? Oh, don't worry. You'll have plenty of sunshine. Sometimes it'll get so hot that you can barely stand it. Be sure to bring some sunscreen and plenty of water. Number six, wild animals. Funny how there are always six things to tell you about in my videos, but I absolutely have to mention the wildlife. Canada is inhabited. Where there are no people, there are wild animals. Those include bears, cougars, elk, moose, deer, beavers, and a gazillion other critters that are better at surviving in the wilderness than you are. If you carry food on your bike, it might attract someone. If you pop up in the wrong place and surprise a big animal, like a bear for example, that animal might perceive you as a threat and hunt you down. This is especially true when there are cubs. Never approach baby bears or other animals no matter how cute they are. The big mama critter will attack you vigorously. In the case of a bear, this can be deadly. You might consider carrying bear spray, but inform yourself on how to use it. Pissing off an already irritated bear might be disastrous. On my tours, I've had several surprise bear encounters. I was most worried about it in the national parks because the bears there may have lost their fear of humans. Thankfully, so far, the bears always seem to be too busy to bother with me. It may be a good idea to hang your food in a tree when camping, or at least park your bike at a safe distance from your tent. Hopefully the bears aren't hungry enough to bother with it, but you just never know. Wild animals don't always have to be big to be dangerous. We have plenty of mosquitoes in Canada. Plenty of horse flies, black flies, wasps, hornets, ants, and what have you. Yes, take some insect repellent. Or stay home and watch my videos. Huh? <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Why do you need to do it anyways, that bicycle tour? Now that I've told you all the scary stuff about why you shouldn't cycle across Canada, I'll change my tune. If any of the reasons above are really deal breakers for you, then I'm sorry I spoiled your enthusiasm. However, at least you won't be riding into the countryside expecting nothing but an easy ride and a beautiful sunshine. There'll be days like that, and after being on the road for a couple of weeks, you'll appreciate them tremendously. But there'll also be the biggest challenges of your life. You may end up soaked to the bone somewhere in the middle of nowhere shortly before dark with no place to sleep. The way to overcome those challenges will change your life. The experiences will teach you things about yourself you never knew before. Looking back on it all much later, it'll be extremely gratifying. There'll be so many memories of places and people you would have never encountered. Canada is extremely diverse. Working your way across the country from west to east, you will see amazing landscape. The mountains in BC and Alberta. Then the vastness of the prairies with the harsh and unpredictable climate and amazing big skies. Ontario will surprise you with its sheer size and places you'll never forget. The big cities are only a very small part of that if you want to cycle through them at all. Quebec has a fantastic network of bicycle paths that spans the province. The only other province that comes close is Prince Edward Island. The Maritimes offer fantastic views of the ocean and lakes along with lots of forests, some of which belong to 
Irving, a rich family business and perhaps something for another video. You'll find friendly people all over the country. Over the years, I've never met anyone who has cycled across Canada and regretted it. Canada is not the perfect country for cycling, but if you love cycling, then there's probably no better place to do it to your heart's content. Is that a contradiction? If you continue watching this series, then you'll probably get what I mean. It is all about the adventure. I have two more videos on the screen right now that you might want to check out. There'll be new ones out every Saturday. You won't miss any of them if you're subscribed with notifications enabled. So welcome to the club and thanks for supporting my channel. Next time, I'll tell you about my first real experience with the KVR, or Kettle Valley Rail Trail. And don't worry, it won't be the Coquihalla this time. <laughs>